Hey guys, it's Barrett. Thanks for joining us on the video this week. This is going to be about installing a second air conditioner in your camper. More specifically, a portable air conditioner in your camper. You know, a lot of places that I go only have 30 amp service. And for the most part, my air conditioner keeps up okay. But during the hotter months of the year down here in Tennessee, sometimes it struggles a little bit. And so I wanted to have something to give that little extra push there. But I also wanted to have something to help warm in the winter time. And I also wanted something that would be a good dehumidifier. And so I found a portable air conditioner that had all of these features. And that's what I decided to put in my camper. The reason for this is that we don't always stay somewhere where there's 50 amp service. We hardly ever do. When we bought the new camper, it had the fireplace, the electric fireplace, which before I'd always used a ceramic heater and a fan to plug in and use the propane to augment that when I needed to, obviously. But for the most part, that always did good. And it still does good. But the electric fireplace doesn't do so hot. I think that it actually is less efficient than the ceramic heater because you turn it on. It does have a blower where it blows the air out a little bit, but it doesn't circulate it around the camper at all like the fan that I had behind the ceramic heater that just kind of blew it down the hallway toward the bedroom. And obviously moisture, especially in the wintertime, can be a big issue in a camper. And I really wanted a way to have a dehumidifier. And so with all of these things kind of pointing me in the face, I found a machine that did all three jobs and I thought that's what I want to do. I think that that'll help us out and be great. Now there's a couple of issues with doing this and I'm going to walk you through each one so that you know what you're getting into because I did not. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is get you a power source for the said air conditioner. If you just plug it into the outlet of the camper, you're not helping yourself because you got to go back to using power management, which is what we're trying to get around. I want to be able to use my main air conditioner and I want to be able to use this and I don't want to uh, flip any breakers or anything like that. So we had another video about installing a 15 amp power inlet, an additional power inlet to the camper. That was um, a very nerve wracking process. Yeah. Mistakes were made, yeah. but it's all over now yeah. and we have it done. So I will caution you about doing that because you do have to drill a hole into your camper. So we got the power aspect set up. Then the next aspect that you think about is whenever you're, you're driving down the road, this thing weighs 70 pounds. And number one, I don't want it to break by falling over and knocking on something. And number two, I don't want it to break anything else. So you have to find a way to restrain that when you're in travel mode. The way that I went with was I have some one by fours because I knew that if I put a hook just right in the Lewan there, as soon as you go around a curve, it's just gonna pull that cup hook out of the wall because there's nothing there. We went through this on our video that we did a few weeks ago about camper problems. I'm gonna link that up here, but the walls are thin and it's not gonna hold a 70 pound air conditioner turning around the corner. So my thought was to get some one by fours I cut them off about three foot long. If I had to do it over again, I would take it up to the window just so it had a little bit more support with the framing around the window. But I cut them off about three foot high and I figured that if I attach the one by four to the wall, just like as a rail that's vertical on each side of the air conditioner on each corner where you would want to put a tie strap, then that would distribute the weight along that whole area where that one by four is touching. And so I got a one by four, I got some screws. I put two screws about every eight or 10 inches, uh, one in each side of the one by four all the way down. But before I did that, I took some construction adhesive and put on the one by four. And so that way you're still avoiding that whole everything's just being held by a screw and some Luon. Now, technically everything is still being supported by the Luon, but I have one hook on each side at the top and at the bottom. And so by doing that, in my mind anyway, it distributes that pull, that force across that whole one by four, and it's not on one particular central point in the Luon. And I think that it's gonna do fine. 
I've brought it on one trip and it's been fine so far. The actual uh, hooks that I did, I just used some steel hooks, some cheap hooks from Home Depot. You can get them at Amazon, you can get them anywhere. And then I used some uh, just cam locked straps. So I didn't want to do the ratchety click, 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 click. These are just straps you hook on there, you pull it tight and it stays because it doesn't have to have a horrible amount of holding force. Basically all it's doing is keeping the air conditioner from tipping over when you go around a curve. And I don't really think it's gonna take much at all. And I think it was probably overkill. Now those straps were a little bit long. So I did also have my sister-in-law um, cut them off and alter them for me. It'd make the handles for the straps a lot shorter. So that, that way I wasn't just dragging around extra straps everywhere. The next problem that you have when doing a portable air conditioner is that the vent mechanism that comes on them is rectangular because your home windows are square and rectangular which in a normal window you just open a little bit and you put that vent in there and you close it and it stays and it's fairly air airtight and it's okay but in a camper it's not that way I have a friend that says a lot of times in kindergarten, he uses this quote all the time, that you can't put a square peg in a round hole. And apparently this is true because if you ever looked at your windows in your camper, they're rounded on the bottom and on the edges. And so how in the world can you make this work? So I tried a couple of different things. Number one, I tried getting that uh, rectangular piece to fit in there and that was not going to work because there was like one to two inches on the edge of that where it was just open window screen there and it was not going to be efficient at all so i perused through the world of youtube and saw a thousand different ways that people do this i came up with a way that was pretty unique i believe so what I ended up doing is taking some five millimeter plywood, which was actually just underlayment because it was pretty cheap. You could get a pretty small piece. Luckily, I got a big enough piece where I can make two because I messed one up. But basically, um, I took the window screen out of the window and I put it down and I traced it around. Now, when I measured this though, when I traced it, my, my thinking on this was that I was going to secure this piece of plywood to the window screen. So there was going to be some holes in the window screen, but everything else would be pretty untouched as far as the rest of the window. So it was a removable system. But I did notice when you did the measurements, like the area that I was trying to cover up was a little bit bigger than the window screen. And so I did add about a half an inch or so there. Uh, but this is all going to vary greatly depending on your actual window and how you do this. So after I added the measurement there, then I cut it out with a jigsaw and a circular saw. And I got something that fit, basically it fits in the window and it fits just inside of the uh, screws that hold the window together, which apparently makes it pretty efficient and airtight because at the top of the window screen, there's already a seal there. And so by holding something flat, there that does get flat against the window then it's relatively airtight and it's going to work just great the next step in this was to attach the air vent from the air conditioner to this thing that i manufactured for the window and so i held the end of it on which was an oval shape I held it on there and i went around it with a marker now when i did this for some reason i made that hole about an inch too long and so that's where it come in. I said I had to make another one. So I made another one the same way. Hole ended up being a lot better there. And I just used one screw in each side of that vent where there was a uh, hole already because that's basically how that attached to the, uh, the rectangular piece that it come with. And so I just used a small screw on both sides to hold that in. I knew that whenever we would go camping and bouncing around on the road, that that would not stay though. And so I wanted to come up with a better option for that. And so the way that I came up with for that is I got some pieces of uh, just aluminum flat plate. So I got two sizes. I got one that was about three quarters of an inch wide. And then I got one that was about half that wide. And that way I put that in my drill press and I made three holes in there. And that way, basically it overlaps and it makes a cleat. So that way it could go around and 
and hold that air conditioner duct on there. When I put that on there, I used a bolt with a washer on the side that would be the inside of the camper. And then on the inside, I used a nylon locking nut with a fender washer. So the fender washer is larger and that way it would hold that thin plywood very well without coming out. Some of these were kind of hard to do because of the angle of the ducting there and drilling the holes and stuff, but it all worked out okay. I do want to note out before I did this, I did paint that piece of plywood. So the outside I painted black. So basically it will just blend in with the screen and the tinted window. In the inside, I was going to paint black. The wife said paint it brown so it matches the uh, surrounds on the curtains and stuff. And I did that and it, I have to say that it turned out better. So she had a good idea. Don't tell her I said that. But whenever I painted that brown, I did also paint those pieces of aluminum brown. In that way, whenever we went and put everything together, everything matched. And this next part is a part that you have to be very careful with because I was afraid that I was gonna break the window. So my plan was just to put a regular little self-tapping screw um, with a pretty large head on it to hold it through the plywood all the way around and just go into the screen, the aluminum screen around the window screen. But I kind of overshot that a little bit and it actually did end up, because I had to take it off or something, it did end up being in the actual aluminum of the window frame it, but it didn't hurt anything it's fine there are going to be some holes left there if i take them out though which kind of irritates me because it's not what i was going for but it works now one of the next steps to this is if you do a lot of searching online you'll find out that a lot of people use these in their camper vans and stuff but a lot of people complain that when you got the air conditioner on it releases a lot of radiant heat through this hose. And so it really needs to be insulated somehow because there's no insulation on it. So basically I use some uh, six inch duct insulation because this duct was six inches long. I just took the connector off where it goes on the machine and I put a sleeve of that over the top of it. Now you're gonna have something that looks like a nice uh, shiny alien in your, in your living room. And that's not so aesthetically pleasing. And so then I had my daughter find a piece of fabric that they had laying around and I had her make a sleeve to go on that. And it's just got a string on each end so you can tighten it down and it kind of camouflages that shiny insulation. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with this process. I did paint those uh, one by fours uh, that, that are the tie downs. I did paint them to match. All I did was get a color that, that relatively blended in with the wall. I went down to Sherwin Williams. I just had them do a paint sample of it, which was like way more than enough than I needed. Because at first I was gonna paint them white, but I wanted to blend in a little bit better. So I did that. So whenever I use this, when I transport it, the hose just sits on top of the air conditioner and it's back in the corner strapped to the wall. Whenever I unstrap it and I pull it out a little bit, then I just connect the ductwork. I open the window. That's one thing that I'm worried that I'm going to forget because you can't tell if the window is open or closed without looking at the top. And usually whenever I do this, I pull the shades down and so it blocks most of that. Now that piece of plywood, technically you do, could make out of like some wax sand so you could see through it. But I kind of didn't want anybody being able to see in there all the time through that area that was next to the ductwork, if that makes any sense. It's also not a main window. It's just the side window in one of our slides. So anyway, after you unhook it, you pull it out, you connect it, you open the window, you plug it into the outlet, which you have previously run an extension cord from the pole to the power inlet. And you turn that sucker on and you let her go. I've used it just a little bit so far. I'll have to see how this actually works for the long run because I'm kind of split on the decision right now of was this a good idea or not because it was a lot of work that I wasn't really anticipating. I will say the actual machine that I have, I'm not sure about it so far. Um, like I say, one reason I got it, it's a 10, I think it's a 10,000 BTU air conditioner. It's a 9,000 BTU heater and it's a dehumidifier. But the problem with it is that there's an internal tank for the dehumidifier, but in order to drain that tank, 
you can't just, it doesn't have like a bucket that you just pull out like a lot of dehumidifiers do. It's got a spout on the back where you have to pull a plug and then put a hose on there and then drain it out. And it's not a very big tank either. And so I did that once and I spilled a lot of water. So I think that I'm going to rectify that by leaving the hose on there and putting a, uh, a valve on there just to open it when I need to drain it. So we'll see how it works and I'll give you an update after I use it for a while. But thanks for watching this week's video. Wish me luck. I think it's going to work out pretty good. Of course you start by unplugging it. I'm going to just reach behind here and undo the duct, raise it up, roll the air conditioner back in the corner, and set the duct right on top of it. And then we just put our straps on. Just pull them tight. And she's ready to go. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.